In tonight's video, we'll be looking at creepy and scary TikToks that will make you question reality. Humanity's Darkest Pictures, Part 53. Hmm? The Aum Kulp Sarin Attack. It was a coordinated terrorist attack carried out by the religious cult Aum Shinrikyo on March 20, 1995. Members of Aum Shinrikyo boarded trains carrying plastic bags filled with liquid sarin and punctured them with sharpened umbrella tips, releasing the deadly nerve agent sarin on several Tokyo subway lines. The attack resulted in the death of 13 people and caused injuries. Here are three TV mm -hmm. series that I've been watching lately and I think you should check out. For those who don't know me, I'm Ray and I watch a lot of movies and TV, especially horror and thrillers. First is From, and it's about a strange town that once you enter, you can't leave. Plus, there are flesh-eating demons that come out at night. It's made by the creators of Lost and has a super eerie feel. Next is Dead Ringers on Prime. It's a reimagining of Cronenberg's 1988 movie. It's about twin fertility doctors who perform ethically questionable procedures. It has a lot of great body horror moments, and it's not for everyone, but I really liked it. Hacks on HBO is for when you need a break from the horror. It's about a dysfunctional mentorship between a legendary but fading comic and a young outcast comic. The leading actresses have great chemistry and are really funny. Let me know if you guys have seen any of these. I've seen Five none. of the most disturbing films to ever exist, and please, whatever you do, do not not try to find these movies. Ostermon tag. Man. Never heard of it. Listen, a dude was in love with this chick, obsessed with her. He kidnapped her and does stuff. That's all you need to know about this movie. These movies are not horror movies, bro. They are just shock and gore. Mm. The horror genre shouldn't even be disrespected by being associated with these movies. I'm gonna just be real with you. Death to Cuffer. This one is pretty straightforward. No. It's a very rare shockumentary movie. I saw this years ago, like years ago. I gotta understand, I'm from that 2000s generation of the internet. Everything was uncensored and Facts. there was no filters. Just know, Death to Cuffer is some... Never mind. on to the next movie. Fetus Munchers, volumes one and two. What? These are like video mixtapes, which is what you'll find a lot of these disturbing movies to be. Just compilations of bullshit. Y'all ain't gonna listen to me, but just... I did my due diligence by saying don't do it. Hmm. Philosophy of a knife. This one was so bad I couldn't even find a, a image to to put up there. Like I just, I don't know. I don't even understand. This is probably one of the goriest films I ever seen in my life, and I'm not kidding. And lastly, the most disturbing movie that I can recall me seeing, or at least in the top five for me, Solo or 120 Days of Sodom. I think that second name is probably enough for you to catch my drift of what the hell this movie got going on honestly bro everybody involved with this movie need to be in jail institutionalized it's like straight that. jacket medicated and kept away from the rest of humanity once again i am not suggesting these movies i would never tell you to go search these movies i just imagine you're anybody seen any of those movies i haven't seen or heard of none of those at all but by the names of some of those movies i probably will never watch those so if you have let me know if I should watch it or not. But like he said, don't try to find these movies. You're home alone with your daughter when she begins to speak to somebody who isn't there. This woman had recently lost her brother. And a few months later, she began to notice her daughter speaking to someone. It wasn't until she recorded when she realized who her daughter was speaking to. Who are you talking to? Kids be seeing go oh uncle, huh? They be seeing ghosts. Who are you talking to? Uncle. Uncle. No. Who are you talking to? Evelyn. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? People are saying that this is indeed her uncle who has taken the role of her guardian angel. Mm. I wonder who my guardian angel is. I wonder if they're still watching me. At age 13, Alicia Kozak was targeted by an online predator. After grooming her for months on the 1st of January 2002, he abducted her from her home in Pittsburgh. Now Alicia had snuck out of her house to meet up with the friend that she'd been talking to online. 
The next thing she knew, she was bundled into a car by a man. Mm -hmm. Alicia was startled when she looked in the back seat of the vehicle and saw handcuffs and a rope. Over four days, she endured horrific torture and essays. Her captor was Scott Tyree. He actually decided to live stream the horrific ordeal. Thankfully, somebody saw the live stream and recognized the girl from missing persons posters. The FBI were notified and they tracked Scott's IP address. On January the 4th, Alicia was rescued when the FBI stormed the property. They tracked down Scott at his workplace about half an hour later. Shockingly, they discovered that Scott actually had a 12 year old daughter who actually wasn't staying with him at the time. In 2003, Scott was given 19 years and seven months in prison. He was released in 2019, but was then sent back after violating parole. He was released yet again in 2021. Alicia now has a master's degree in forensic psychology and has dedicated her life to educate- The rarest diseases in the world, part one. Behind me is an artist's depiction of hydrocephalus, and this was drawn back in 1701. Yo. I literally just seen a video of a couple that had a baby and the baby head looked something like this. Like it was just laying in the bed and the head was bigger than the body. That's crazy to me. What I want to know is, does the brain grow just as much as the head? Right? Because if that's the case, that might be a little genius right there or something. Hydrocephalus is characterized by an enlargement of the head and this is typically found in children or infants. Behind me is a brain scan of somebody with hydrocephalus. This dark space in the middle is cerebrospinal fluid, and this is what causes the enlargement of the head. Mm. Hundreds of years ago, when science was advancing and physicians were attempting to cure this, they decided that they wanted to drain the fluid using these rudimentary instruments up there. This really didn't work too well, and a lot of these patients ended up passing away from their treatment. Nowadays, we do have better That's treatments, and we at least know the root cause. That's the baby I think I've seen. There was a video of this somewhere i think it probably was on tiktok of this and the odds that your child is born with hydrocephalus is roughly two in 1000 treatment of hydrocephalus is really what needs to be done in order to survive from this without treatment the survival rate is roughly 50 percent and additionally on top of this many people that don't treat their hydrocephalus in time will have severe brain damage make sure to hit that ian brady and myra henley we're going to be covering the infamous moore's murders there's something different about them. There's something even darker about them. 16-year-old Pauline Reed was on her way to a dance. 12-year-old John Kilbride went to the movies with his friend John Ryan that afternoon. 12-year-old Keith Bennett was heading to his grandmother's home to spend the night. 10-year-old Leslie Ann Downey. 17-year-old Edward Evans. He could have told me that the earth was flat. I would have believed him. Not only did he not show remorse, but he made it clear that he never would. Ian never made me do anything I didn't want to do. No way can they let, let them out. If they do, I'll be going in because she'll be dead. Hmm. Help us raise, raise the prisons to the ground. Lights out, everybody. This is known as the most convincing case of time travel in the history of the world. There's been a lot. Sergei Ponomarenko was a guy who just appeared out of literally nowhere in uh, Kiev in 2006, right? So he showed up dressed in like really old clothing and he had this really old looking camera. So he claimed he was walking down the street with his girlfriend. A flash of light happened and he was spawned to the year 2006. There was film in the camera that was undeveloped. When they developed the film it showed photos of a girl it looked like the 1950s in Kiev. so then they were like okay who's this girl in the photos he was like that's my girlfriend so they were like okay what's her name they look her up track her down they go and talk to her right she's in her 70s at this point she was like he was my boyfriend in the 50s and one day he just vanished came back two years later he showed her a photo of him as an old man in the city with these giant skyscrapers and he said this is me in Kiev in uh, 2050. So yeah. the cops get him set up in this high-rise hotel and they're like, you're gonna stay here tonight, we're gonna have guards outside the door, and we're gonna figure everything out in the morning, right? There's surveillance footage, right? They put him in this room, goes to bed, there's guards outside the door the whole night, there's like, on the footage, you can see it. The next morning, they come to try to- This is the- Let me find out, he was gone. Yo, let me find out that they got a whole, like, 
portal in Kyiv, right? And there's some crazy stuff going on there right now. Sad and disturbing story of a Silent Hill character. Let's talk about the tragic life of Eddie Dombrowski. Hill, More huh? disturbing horror content right here. For as long as he could remember, Eddie hated his body. He was constantly made fun of for both his weight and his appearance inside and outside of school. One of the football players at his high school was so mean that he actually followed Eddie after graduation to continue to make fun of him. Eddie was so traumatized by this that one day he snapped and he got rid of the football player's dog. These events gave Eddie a lifelong and terrible case of body dysmorphia. Eddie eventually finds his way into Silent Hill. He tells James that he thinks everyone around him is laughing at him and making fun of him. Eventually, Eddie completely loses it, vowing to kill the next person that makes fun of him. You fight him in Eddie's version of Silent Hill, which looks like a meat locker. In Silent Hill, he's surrounded by the corpses of people you think he's killed, but in actuality, he's only ever gotten rid of the dog. You also find Eddie next to a couple posters of the Las Vegas so there's this concert that happens called the Route 91 concert. What ended up happening is this guy, so he had a room that was looking right out at the, the concert. There's surveillance footage of him loading giant, like a, like a bunch of bags up into this room, right? But because he was a regular, they knew him. They didn't think anything of it. So long story short, that night he started shooting down, going crazy, bro. Like, like spraying like 50 rounds at a time, just going back and forth through this giant crowd of people. And so then everybody starts freaking out. Jason Aldean is performing at the time. He runs off stage. It's just like chaos. There's this crazy conspiracy, though, that there was this security guard that worked at the Mandalay Bay named Jesus Campos. Jesus Campos was on the floor at the moment that the shooting started, right? Jesus Campos, he is the only person that saw what happened. Well, he vanished after. He was, he was scheduled to do a bunch of interviews and talk with the cops. We have another update for this woman that freaked out on a plane claiming that she saw a figure. She claimed that the man sitting next to her was a shapeshifter. Check out this new footage. Stop the plane. Stop the plane. She out of there. <laughs> I feel her though. What would y'all do if y'all seen a shapeshifter? YouTube channel, so make sure you check it. Man, that wasn't that much of an update. Haunted places in Philippines. Clark Air Base Hospital. The Clark Air Base Hospital accommodated soldiers and other casualties during World War II and the Vietnam War. The hospital lasted until the historic Pinabuto eruption swept over it. Since then, until now, the hospital is left abandoned. Due to the number of soldiers that died in this hospital, it is a hot, spicy place for paranormal activities. People have spicy. heard soldiers screaming, <laughs> babies crying, <laughs> and even spirits lingering around. Numerous TV crews have visited the hospital for investigation and a number of them were so frightened that they fled immediately. What a couple of poofs and yes, you can visit this place if you want to. But why would you wanna? It is located in Angeles City, Pampanga Province. Okay, bye. He makes spooky, not spooky. Okay, somebody just playing with a shadow, y'all. He was out hiking in the middle of the woods when suddenly something begins to stalk him. User Cree4 uploaded a creepy video showing why when the woods go silent, you should know something's not right. In the video, you can see a rabbit by the trail completely still as if something nearby is haunting the area. But it wasn't until he hears this that he realizes his life could be in danger. Right 
what sounds like a human muffled voice can be heard saying, Help me, as he just runs the other way. Could this be a Wendigo or a skinwalker trying to lure him into the woods? Horror movies you should not watch unless you want to be actually traumatized. I'm not joking, okay? The movie we're talking about today is not only so much worse than Human Centipede, it's also worse than Serbian film. You know the movie that was banned in over 40 countries for being too disturbing? Well, this movie is worse than that. Trauma is the most messed up horror movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, if you've seen a bunch of horror movies and nothing has scared you or made you feel grossed out, I promise this will. Basically, this movie talks about the passing down of trauma from generation to generation because it's about a torturer who trains his son to take over for him. And the rest of the movie is about the son after he grows up. So we see the terrible person he ends up becoming because of what his father made him do. Even if you're very experienced in watching horror, I'd still be careful checking this one out. Follow for more. Hmm. The alleged Delphi killer is believed to have confessed to killing the two girls on a prison phone call. As you may know, 50-year-old Richard Allen stands accused of killing Libby German and Abigail Williams in 2017. During a hike, the young girls documented their day on Snapchat. They then vanished in broad daylight near a bridge and their bodies were found less than a mile away from where they'd last been seen alive. Now, Richard has pleaded not guilty, but new reports are stating that he had a phone conversation from jail on the 3rd of April. This was allegedly a call with his wife, Kathy Allen. He apparently admits several times to killing the two girls before the wife hangs up the phone. At a court hearing though, Richard's defense attorney states that any potentially incriminating claims made by Richard should be dismissed due to his apparent declining mental state. Mubs always wanna do the mental decline. There's something mentally wrong, man, to choose the easy way out. And y'all did the crime, you gotta do the time. Richard is currently being held at the- Let's talk about one of the creepiest phone calls ever made, the 1997 Art Bell call. Or more commonly referred to as the Area 51 caller. Real quick before I start this video, do you guys believe in aliens? I kinda do, we can't be the only ones here. Let, let's be honest, come on, the galaxy's huge. So on September 11th, 1997, famous radio host Art Bell received a very creepy phone call from a very frantic, panicky caller that was claiming that he worked at Area 51. In the call, this frantic caller starts to talk about how the government is hiding these things and how like things are basically not what they seem. However, what shook up people was that as he was getting to the juicy details, the whole radio station loses connection. Then the station gets a backup connection and you hear Art Bell and this other radio host kind of like discussing how weird that was. Now, I'm gonna show you the call. Now listen, is this real? Is it a hoax? I don't know, but it's creepy. And I'm gonna show it to you, okay? Here it is. Online, you're on the air, hello. Hello, Art? Yes. Hi, um, I, 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 I don't have a whole lot of uh, time. Um, well, look, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, area, area 51. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? Uh, I, a former employee. Former, um, but they're not doing, they're not doing anything. They are not. They want the major population centers wiped out <laughs> so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable. Discharge. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You can say that. In some way, something knocked us off the air, and we're on a backup system now. It's uh, the government, or I don't know. What y'all think about that one? I don't know. This disturbing case of the freeway phantom killer remains unsolved. In 1971, Washington, D.C. was experiencing its first ever serial killer. In April that year, 13-year-old Carol Spinks was walking to a local shop to get some food for her family. After purchasing dinner, she headed home, but she would disappear on the short walk back. Tragically, the young girl's body was discovered six days later. She'd been SA'd and strangled to death. Mm -hmm. However, this would not be the last tragic killing that the community would experience. Just two months later, another body was found. The victim was discovered in exactly the same spot that Carol was found in. This was right next to the freeway. 
Locals were terrified of the so-called freeway killer. The killer then made a terrifying move that no one was expecting. The third victim was Brenda Crockett. She was only 10 years old and again, she'd gone to the shops for food and never returned home. This time, however, her family received a terrifying phone call. Now, Brenda's mum had realized she'd vanished and she'd gone out looking for her. While she did, the phone rang. Brenda's younger sister was actually inside and she took the phone call. Her sister told her that she was in Virginia and a man had snatched her. Then there was another call half an hour later. Brenda asked, did my mother see me? Then she whispered, well, I'll see you. The phone hung up and Brenda was found deceased a day later. In October, 12 year old Nenemoshia Yates vanished on her way home from the shops. A mere two hours later, her body was found by a passerby. Again, something was coming that nobody expected from this killer. 16 year old Brenda Woodard disappeared. This time when her body was found, there was a note in the pocket. The note was actually written in Brenda's handwriting. This led police to believe that the killer dictated the note and Brenda wrote it. It says, this is tantamount to my insensitivity to people, especially women. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. And it's signed the freeway phantom. Now things went quiet and the community thought that they were finally safe. However, 10 months later, 17 year old Diane Williams was killed. This time the killer callously phoned her parents and said, I killed your daughter. Police were initially suspicious of Robert Askins. He'd actually been in prison for another murder. When they searched his property, they found photos of girls and a knife. Now he wasn't actually convicted of any of the freeway killings. He was however imprisoned for kidnapping and SAing other girls. Shockingly, in 2009, police admitted that they lost the entire case file. This is including potential DNA evidence. There still remains $150,000. I'm about to sh- Man, that's just sad. I ain't gonna lie, man. Honestly, y'all, we had a case like that here in my town. Just, man, last weekend. And it's so sad, I don't even want to go into it. But the family, they got a whole GoFundMe. So I'm gonna drop the link to their GoFundMe down below. And if you guys want to go ahead and help them out, you can do that. Show you a video of serial killer Ed Kemper explaining how he killed, dismembered, and got rid of a human body. This video is extremely disturbing, and here it is. The third murder, which is the second incident, okay? I'm in the middle of trying to get my record sealed, right? Thursday night, I killed her. I took off Friday. I didn't go to work. I called in sick, took CTO, all right? Dismembered her body got rid of her body but kept her head in her hands because they're identifiable they're highly identifiable i kept those at the apartment okay that friday night I, uh, thursday night i took her friday uh friday morning she was dismembered friday night she was disposed of right saturday morning i left right and i didn't have i wasn't satisfied that i, I took the head along in the hands but i didn't i couldn't put them someplace that i would, could be sure they would be dug up by an animal or just be somewhere it's, it's scary going out there trying to bury somebody or dispose of body parts in a community or out in the even in the boonies where you don't know where you're at and who can come up at any moment i had some real close calls there where people would come out of nowhere and if they if a body's found and they remember this beige looking car sitting there the night that's evidence so it was very very hard to get rid of this stuff you have to hear this a police officer says that he was actually abducted by aliens on a thursday night in march of 2006 in argentina in a province called la pampa a police corporal named sergio pucheta requested for backup from his base over the radio he sounded shaken but before losing contact he managed to say that there was something strange in the area and that he was going to investigate he was at a place known as cruce de las cañas a rural area about 20 kilometers south of the city of general pico when additional officers arrived at the scene police corporal pucheta was nowhere to be found there was however on the ground his service handgun a radio a cell phone a motorcycle helmet and the motorcycle pucheta was using for his patrols a search team was quickly deployed to look for him when investigating the area of the corporal's disappearance they discovered footprints and realized that they traveled in a southbound direction as they followed the footprints they realized that they started to grow farther and farther apart from each other a clear indication that pucheta had started running running at one point. They followed this clue for between 1,000 to 1,500 meters until strangely, 
the footprints all of a sudden disappeared. The police looked for more clues, but they couldn't find any. It seemed as though the police corporal had just simply vanished. The next day, however, at 4 p.m., after an 18-hour long search, Bucetta was finally found by a local farmer on the side of the road, 20 kilometers away from the area of his disappearance. The farmer alerted authorities, and when they arrived at the scene, Bucetta was curled up in the fetal position. The chief detective in charge of the search team, Roberto Ayala, said that Bucetta appeared to be in a state of severe emotional shock and that he was unresponsive at first. Bucetta was taken to a local hospital and after he calmed down a bit, he told his co-workers a terrifying account of what had happened to him. He said that when he got to the location that he went to investigate, he bumped into two strange humanoid beings with glowing red eyes. He said that one of the beings spoke to him telepathically and ordered him to disarm his weapon and disable his radio and cell phone. Bucetta said that he got scared and tried to make a run for it. He ran as fast as he could, but he said that the strange thing was, was that as he started to run, he started feeling like he was floating. Another thing he observed was that there was a circular mark in the terrain near him, as if a circular object had landed there and crushed plants and dirt. The police corporal said that that was all he remembered before finding himself on the side of the road. Even more terrifying was that after this event, Bucetta underwent a therapy similar to hypnotic regression, where he recalled that he was indeed abducted by these beings. He recalled that a bright light appeared in the sky and that he was levitated up to it. He then recalled finding himself in a place with luminous walls and being placed on a table or bed. Unfortunately for Police Corporal Sergio Pucetta, he was let go after this whole incident. This Man, is one of the crazy. scariest movies ever made. And that's not just my opinion. That statement is backed up by scientific evidence. An experiment was run to try and find out what the scariest movie ever made was, and a group of subjects were hooked up to all sorts of machines that monitored heartbeat, blood flow, muscle movement, and sweat rate, whilst watching a whole range of different horror movies. And this movie was top of that list. My name's Ricky, I love horror movies, and this is Host. Hmm. So Host was released in 2020 and was directed by Rob Savage, who recently directed the new Bogeyman movie. So this movie was filmed and released during the height of the pandemic, and the movie itself takes place during lockdown. So the movie centers around a group of friends. They routinely get together, like a lot of people did during the pandemic, uh, via Zoom. And one night they decide to do a online seance. So they invite this woman to join their Zoom meeting who helps them with the seance. She's a medium, she's psychic, all of that. It's very clear from the start of this movie that a lot of them don't really believe in this and they're kind of just messing around. But there is one or two of them who are quite afraid. At first, it's all lighthearted. They're playing pranks on each other. But then eventually, it all starts to go wrong. And that's where this movie really starts to scare you. When I tell you that I love this movie, I mean I really love it. I'm a big fan of fan footage horror movies. I'm also a really big fan of movies that use this format. But it's very hard to get this format right because the movie itself rides solely on the actor's performances. Because there's nowhere else to go, there's nowhere to hide. There is a camera in your face throughout the entire movie and you have to give a performance that's believable otherwise people are going to leave. And every performance in this movie is great. Not one actor hmm. in this movie Might have terrible. to watch this one. This movie does rely heavily on jump scares. And that can get quite boring in a lot of horror movies. But this movie uses jump scares in a really inventive way. And a really modern way. Like this movie made me jump out of my skin so many times. But what this movie really did is it played upon our fears. The fears that everybody was feeling at this time. That fear of isolation, the fear of not being able to stay in touch with the people we love, the fear of loneliness and boredom, and that fear of isolation and that fear of lack of human contact is manifested in this entity, this thing that is stalking them as they all sit there on this Zoom meeting. Mm. It's a fucking good film. You should definitely watch it. I might have to watch Host, y'all. I don't know though, I ain't into the horror movies like that. I'm more into the horror TikToks, you dig? 
But yeah, these are some of the most creepy and scary TikTok videos that are on the internet. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bell on, and until next time, YouTube, peace. Thank <laughs> you.